on the west bank of the Missouri River, population 301,000. Pretty big, all right. Larger than Greater Hooterville and Pixley combined. <laughs> you excited? Oh, I've never been so thrilled in my life. Would you like to hear the telegram again? Do you just happen to have it with you? Oh, no, I have it memorized. <laughs> it's Billy Joe Bradley, Shady Rest, Hooterville. Have booked you for one week singing engagement at the Galaxy Room, Omaha. Contact me for details. Signed, S. Sparks, Sparks Agency. S.D., congratulations. You know, Mom, that's the only part I don't understand. Shouldn't it be P.S., congratulations? I just figured it out. The person who took the telegraph message added his own personal congratulations. S.D., Sam Drucker. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I'd better get back to my packing. You need any help? Oh, well, no thanks. I sure could use another suitcase. Another one? I gave you two already. I need one more at least. Yesterday, that same girl said, Mom, I don't have a thing to wear. the old secret passageway. What old secret passageway? The old secret passageway that every old place has. I knew we had one. I just knew it. I was probing between the walls for the wiring for my new room service idea that I'm working on, and I accidentally bumped my head, and I hear this hollow sound. So I take my hammer, and I give her a big whack, and what do you suppose I found? A hole in your head. Kate, <laughs> you're like all the people that laughed at Ponce de Leon. Said his wireless wouldn't work. But your Ponce de Leon... Which way did the secret passage go? That's a funny thing. It goes almost straight up and down. I had to lean over to keep from falling in. Uncle Joe, what's underneath us in the basement? That's the laundry room. Yeah. And what's above us? Bedrooms. And what runs straight up and down between them? The laundry chute. Somebody using the laundry chute for a secret passage. <laughs> You don't buy it, huh? Uncle Joe, nail it back up, huh? <laughs> City slickers for a loop. Well, I'll try. Excuse me a minute. Steve, I'm leaving now. So this is it. Goodbye. Well, aren't you going to the train with me? Well, sure. But what's wrong with two goodbyes? Well, if that's what you're concerned about, why don't you help with her luggage? <laughs> you Billy Joe's ready to leave now. Good luck, Billy Joe. I know you'll be the biggest thing in Omaha since prime beef. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> what are these wires? Well, that's part of my room service idea, so the guests can just buzz when they want something. Oh, they aren't live, are they? Why, of course not, Kate. Not while I'm working on them. I pulled a few switches on all of them. They're dead as a doornail. <laughs> a one out of six isn't bad. You're going to miss all this in Omaha. And speaking of missing, it's sure going to be a long week. Oh, I don't think you'll suffer too much. I'll give my sister's permission to see that you're not too lonely. Really? No kidding. <laughs> you don't have to be so eager about it. <laughs> uh, girls, the uh, cannonball whistle blew a while ago, shall we? Bye, Uncle Joe. Bye, Billy Joe. I wonder which one is the live one. <laughs> this is worse than 
Russian roulette. It's got to be one of those last two. Well, what do you know? Time for a coffee break. You had your supper. from you. Okay, you win. Ma, tomorrow night Steve is going to the rally dance with me at college. Oh, how's that coming about? I asked him. You asked him? Yeah, Billy Joe told us she didn't want Steve to get lonely. And I thought that was the least I could do for her. Oh, the least. <laughs> What about Tommy? Tommy? Well, the last time I saw your bulletin board in your room, he was top man. Tommy's okay. Oh, his rating sure went down in a hurry. Last week he was heavenly, divine, and wonderful. Well, you know how men can change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> men can change like that. Billy Joe did give me her permission, Mom. Yes, dear, I know. I was there. So why don't you and Steve go to the dance and have a good time? Thanks, Mom. What are you doing? Working. Working? Yeah, on my room service project. I just pulled these six wires which lead from the rooms up above through the wall. Now I'm waiting for the seventh wire to show up. You're waiting for the seventh wire to show up? Yeah. <laughs> Hurry it up in there. <laughs> Well, it's about time. Now what? He wants to get paid. Oh, the health problem these days. All they can think about is their pay. <laughs> Give him a cracker. One cracker? Oh, yes, big spender. Hey, come on, before he decides to take deductions. <laughs> Cannonball whistle. I talked Floyd into not blowing it. Oh. Well, I thought, uh, no use disturbing anybody. After all, it is kind of late. Oh, sure. Uh, how was the dance? Oh, Mama had the most wonderful, glorious, sensational. Uh, it was okay. <laughs> yeah, it's labeled an okay evening. Thank you, Steve. Hi. Young lady, what are you doing up? I, uh,. <laughs> I thought I heard someone come in, and I, uh, I did. <laughs> Not you did. But we have a watchdog to watch out for people who come in late. I know. Steve, would you like to go to the movies with me tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Well, I, uh, I don't see any reason why I can't. It's a date. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, see you tomorrow night. <laughs> Good night, dear. Good night, Bobby Joe. Try not to be lonely. <laughs> Okay. Aren't we a little early for Christmas? It's my room service system. 
I'll show you how it works. Betty Jo. Betty Jo went to the movies with Steve. Oh, yeah. Bobby Jo. Honey, Uncle Joe. Go in room number two and press that buzzer beside the door I just put in. Okay. This will make Jelton and them other birds look like they're sleeping in tents. I'm in room two. Well, go ahead, push the buzzer. <laughs> Bobby Joe, you sure you're in room number two? Yes, I'm in room two. Well, go across the hall to room number five and push the buzzer in there. Okay. You see how this will improve the service. Oh, yeah, I can see. <laughs> Well, go ahead, push the buzzer. <laughs> a couple little bugs here I'm going to have to iron out. Bobby Joe, go next door to room six. Marconi didn't come up with a steamboat overnight either, you know. Yeah, I know. Room six, ready? Go ahead, push it. <laughs> That's another little bug I'm going to have to iron out. I know. When you get through ironing out all these little bugs, it's going to be pretty squishy around here. Well, I'll get it all straightened out tomorrow. Right now, I've got to hit the hay. Good night. Good night. I'll close them. Hi, Bobby Joe. Good night, Uncle Joe. What are you doing here? Well, you should be in bed, too. I thought I'd come down here and finish my homework. At this hour? It's pretty late. Too late. Betty, Joe, and Steve should have been home a half hour ago. They shouldn't? Well, the movie was over at 10.16. And if they stopped to Cliff's Root Fair Palace, that should have only taken 20 minutes. And, well, they should have been home by now easily. Mm. Uh, tell me, Miss Keeper of the schedule, why are you so concerned about their tardiness? Steve has to get up early and go to work. <laughs> Well, there's the cannonball, so you can relax and go to bed. Scoot. Mom, I wanted to see Betty Jo about something. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see her about that can't wait? Uh, I wanted to ask her how the movie was. Look, I'll have her write a detailed review and see that you get it first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh, dear. Clumsy on me. Clumsy on you. Hi, kids. Hi. Hi. Have a nice evening. Oh, Mom, we had the most colossal time. I've never had so much fun. Well, hi, Bobby Joe. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, Bobby Joe stayed up because she wanted to ask you something. Didn't you, Bobby Joe? Oh, yeah. How's the movie? Great. What was it about? Cowboys and Indians. Uh, pirates and sailors. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess that was the coming attraction. There's some cake and cookies in the kitchen if you kids haven't eaten. Oh, thanks, Mom, but we've had plenty. Popcorn in the show, and, and after that we had milkshakes and hamburgers. A root beer and pizzas. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess it was Dorothy and Arnold that had milkshakes. Uh, Ruth and Paul. <laughs> Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll go upstairs to bed. Good night. Thanks, Steve. Good night, Betty Joe. I sure had fun. Well, I think it's time we all said good night. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Bradley. Good night. Good night, Bobby Joe. <laughs> Bobby Joe. Huh? Uh, good night, Mom. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> took it down word for word. Tell everyone that everything is going better than I ever dreamed. Last night, the audience called me back for three encores before I could beg off. <laughs> That's showbiz talk. I know. Sounds like she's going over big. 
Maybe she'll be uh, held over for another week. Two weeks. A month. Six months. Are you? Is that what you wish would happen? Well, we were only thinking of Billy Joe. Yeah, she's the one we were thinking of. Of course you were. For a talk? Always. I have a problem and it's bothering me. And I was wondering if I'm doing the right thing. You say it's bothering you? Yes. Then you're probably not doing the right thing. When Billy Joe left, she said it was okay if Betty Joe and I took out Steve. To keep him from getting lonely. That was the idea. Then I had so much fun on the date. So, Mom, I feel like I'm falling for him. I see. Somehow, I don't feel right about it. Permission to babysit her boyfriend, and uh, the babysitter runs off with the baby. Something like that. And you feel guilty about Billy Joe? Until I remembered that all is fair in love and war. That's a nice out, but I don't think it applies to sisters. But I can't help the way I feel. I know that, dear. And Saturday, we're having a church picnic, and I'd like to invite Steve. Oh. Yeah, I'd hold off on that one until you hear from the other side of the rectangle. You mean triangle? No, no. In this case, uh, I think it's a rectangle. <laughs> and, Mom, I've shared a sack of popcorn with other fellows before, but this time, with each kernel, I felt tingly all over. <laughs> Did he buy you buttered or plain? Buttered. Uh-oh. Got to watch out for those big spenders. Oh, I'm serious. I know you are, dear. But all of this is making you feel guilty about Billy Joe. How'd you know? Oh, <laughs> that mother's intuition or something. Yeah. And Saturday... You were planning on taking Steve to the church picnic. You're amazing. Do you really think that's the thing to do? Well, we promised Billy Joe we'd keep Steve from being lonely. Yes, but that's the night before Billy Joe gets back. I wouldn't want Billy to get mad at me. For not keeping him company up till the very end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the sisterly love that you girls have is a beautiful... They're close to one another. So close it's starting to squeak. <laughs> you want to have this little talk? Well, I felt I had to talk to someone, and I wasn't getting two good answers from the dog. <laughs> I know what you mean. I uh, just don't know how to open this up. Well, uh, I have three daughters. How's that for openers? That says it all. But frankly, this whole thing has become rather complicated. Uh, the question is, uh, how do you feel about them? Confused. Somehow I've got a date with both Betty Joe and Bobby Joe. I don't know what to do. I'm sort of caught in the middle. There's your answer. Huh? When in doubt, stay in the middle. <laughs> Come on, see you later. Bye. Bye. Have a good time. <laughs> you all finished with your room service project? Yeah. I rearranged all the wires. For those new guests checking in this afternoon, you'll get a chance to find out how she works. How are you making out with Steve and the girls? Oh, so far it's all right. All I got to do is think up some good answers for Billy Joe when she gets back tomorrow. <laughs> Uncle Joe, the electric fan just went on. Oh, that means the guest in room number four wants room service. What? <laughs> I a code I worked out so you can understand, too. When the whole light goes on, room one is ringing for room service. When the toaster goes on, that means room two wants room service. When the waffle iron... Mom! Mom! Wait, Joe? Mom! Mom! Oh, Billy Joe! Hi, Mom. Mom, we, we weren't expecting you until tomorrow. Oh, I made better connections than I planned on. Uh -huh. I'll tell you about that later. And where is everybody? Everybody? 
Yeah, well, uh, but Uncle Joe is upstairs, and uh, and the dog is under the porch. Oh, I mean Bobby Joe and Betty Joe. Oh, them. Uh, well, uh, uh, Bobby Joe's with Betty Joe, and Betty Joe's with Bobby Joe. <laughs> what about Steve? Steve, sit down, dear. Anything wrong? No. No, it's just. When there are interpersonal relationships, sometimes things happen. You know what I mean? I didn't think you did. <laughs> well, before you went away, you told Bobby Joe and Betty Joe to keep Steve occupied so he wouldn't get lonesome, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you see, sometimes when a girl keeps a fella occupied, uh, the, 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 the girl uh, gets occupied. <laughs> now, do you see what I mean? I think I'm beginning to. Oh, thank heavens. Well, what am I saying? <laughs> Bobby Joe and Betty Joe have become interested in Steve? I'm afraid they did. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful? Well, it makes everything so easy. Oh, I met the greatest fella in Omaha. He helped me with my song arrangements. and Oh, he was the one that drove me to the train so I could make connections. And um, then we just had a super time together. And up until now, I just didn't know what to tell Steve. I was sort of a... Well, sort of a... a uh, confused... That's it, confused. Stand in line. Well, stand in line? Well, I don't quite understand. Well, the radio just started playing out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Don't get excited, dear. Um, Uncle Joe? Yeah, okay. Uh, room five is ringing for room service. Hi, Billy Joe. Hi, Uncle Joe. Glad to be home, dear? Well, yes, but I mean, why is the radio... Well, how come it... Well, what made it... Confused is a key word. <laughs> the three of us, we love you so. The three of us, we won't let you go. The three of us, we'll love you till we die. Me, my heart, and I. accidents that never could happen but did. <laughs> Two rooms rang for service at the same time. <laughs> Nick Night's TV Land has uncovered three rare television oddities from our huge archives. Annie Potts in Good Time Girls, George Wendt in Making the Grade, and Rock Hudson in The Devlin Connection. They're big stars on the little screen. Today, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, on TV Land's Saturday Cavalcade. Now stay tuned for Green Acres as Hooterville Saturday continues here in TV Land.